and we're going to we're going to continue on with the program. Andy Worley, uh, are you in the house and ready to go, sir? I am. All right, you got your microphone in hand, and uh, you're uh, you're you're coming to us from the comfort of your own apartment. And uh, what do you have up right. your sleeve for us tonight, Andy? All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, first off, I'd like to, yes, <laughs> um, give an unpaid, unsolicited, unpaid uh, plug for Ale Asylum here, and I think we can all appreciate the sentiment behind the name of this beer. If you can all get a good look at that. So, all right. So, my theme is, um, as you see, lemonade or making lemonade out of this lemon of a year. So without further ado, can, can you all hear me? I just want to make sure, uh, give a thumbs up and, since yeah, I can't hear myself. Yeah, we got you. We got you. Okay. All right. So um, second day of the year, um, there were, since I work in the news business, um, I'd heard minor rumblings of some virus that had been going around in China, but eh, no big deal. Never going to come here, right? So second day of the year, um, I get a heads up uh, actually from a guy who works at Wisconsin and Southern that he's going to be taking the local out of Madison with a bucket list item for me, their uh, SD45 car body locomotive, uh, WAMX number 4223. So here it is crossing uh, Black Earth Creek near Black Earth, Wisconsin. Then here it is, um, west of Mazomany in uh, finally good light when the sun came out. This was only a four car train, um, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. I would have liked to see this with uh, about three other units behind it and a hundred cars, but uh, so. um, moving on, this is uh, west of Arena. It's a little town out in uh, Iowa County. This is the line that goes to Prairie du Chien. Um, this is their uh, customer. This is called Anderson at a little place called uh, Helena. They're near Spring Green, just east of the big bridge that goes over the Wisconsin River there. And uh, this is the point where I broke off the chase, but uh, got a nice shot of them there uh, doing their switching. So um, here's uh, CP train 281. This is in mid-January. They're coming into Portage with two Union Pacific SD40Ns leading. Um, I'll just uh, stay on this one for a while. This was a this was a case of saw the heads up on Facebook while I was at work. Um, calculated that I could just barely beat them to Portage if I threw my gear in the car and raced up there after work. So that's what I did. Uh, they changed crews there at the depot. And then the new crew took the train down to Portage West, which is um, the control point where it uh, becomes single track uh, going on to the Toma sub, where they met uh, train 288 with uh, two BNSF-9s leading it. So uh, this meet was uh, one of those cases of whose railroad is this anyway? Uh, we have uh, two CP trains uh, meeting with uh, no CP power, at least uh, not in the lead. So 281 accelerated very rapidly out of there. Um, and I had got on the interstate and chased them to Camp Douglas, where they met a, an eastbound movement of a light engine, Norfolk Southern-9. Uh, this had, um, I assume, dropped off a sand train near Sparta. And uh, here they are coming out of Mile Creek. Uh, I chased them back east. Uh, they had just met uh, 199 here. So moving on now, this is um, 
late January and the big excitement on the Facebook groups was that uh, Wisconsin Central number 3018 was uh, now based out of Manitowoc on the uh, L548, which is the local job that uh, from the yard there works the industries. This is passing uh, Red Arrow Park and uh, this mural uh, commemorates the Red Arrow Brigade um, it's on the old uh, Richter Vinegar building. <clears throat> then uh, here's a shot of uh, 3018. It was out along the lakefront and uh, ran light engine back toward the yard. Um, it's got uh, some long hood panels here off of WC number 6001, which is one of the former Algoma Central SD40-2s that they had. Um, and some of you might remember um, 3018 was the locomotive that before it was painted uh, by Wisconsin Central actually had a whole patchwork of uh, parts and, and hood panels from I think Seaboard, uh, Burlington Northern, some other Wisconsin Central units. So, so some of you might have seen those uh, Franken Jeep photos from back then. And it's, I believe, the last GP40 active in Wisconsin Central paint. Um, they, so they went back from that uh, spur that goes out to the lakefront, they went back into the yard, picked up some cars, and then shoved back out to switch international paper. And there they are doing that. Um, someone actually at some point touched up or replaced the shield logo on the short hood there. Um, a few years ago, it was just as faded as the ones on the cab. So thank you to whoever did that. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of uh, about a lot of us formers appreciate that. So here's one final shot um, as they were ready to head back to the yard after working international. This locomotive actually stayed with this job for most of the year um, until recently. Just as I was thinking about making another trip back up there, I saw that they had packed it off to Canada. So, uh, so that's that, unfortunately. Um, so that same day, I headed over to Fond du Lac, and the first thing I did was miss a southbound manifest, but. Um, Chasing them out of town was the helper set with a uh, Bessemer and Lake Erie locomotive. So this is that southbound. They stopped at Byron to meet a northbound intermodal. And then, uh, so th yeah, this was an operation. I had not seen them do it this way before. They'd always just had the helpers tie on out of shop's yard. But here they had the helpers follow them down and then tie on at Valley before going over the hill. So there they are crossing uh, 175 at Byron. And then heading back, uh, light engine. Um, this is a day in February. I got another heads up from my Wisconsin and Southern buddy that he was uh, going to be taking the local out of the yard. Uh, this is the L468, I believe. It works the line that goes out to Sun Prairie and Waterloo. And uh, I call I call this photo oblivious uh, because this kid here had actually um, came from over here walked across the tracks in front of the train, and then actually walked on the railhead toward the approaching train, it, it, just as it had come out of the yard and was starting to come around this curve here. Never looked up. I was just about to yell at him when he finally started to walk away from the tracks. So yeah, just uh, the obliviousness of some people around railroad tracks is just uh, disappointing. So. Here's uh, that same train. Uh, this is one of the few winter 
winter type photographs you'll see from me. I am no Don Marson. Um, I froze for this shot as this train stopped. They uh, switched um, altar recycling on the east side of Madison for about an hour before I got this shot. Um, this was one of the few chances I had to get out um, after a snowfall when there were still drifts piled up at the crossings. So that was fun. Uh, this is um, this was on Valentine's Day. This is in Windsor on the M and P subdivision, which is the line that goes between Portage and Madison, uh, the CP, uh, former Milwaukee Road line, uh, and a very uncommon uh, to see an SD forty dash two liter on this local. Um, it's almost always four axle power, uh, dating back to Milwaukee Road F units and uh, Sioux Line GP38-2s. These days it's mostly these uh, GP20 Ecos, like the trailing locomotive here. But uh, this day, I, there's actually a Facebook group dedicated to heads ups for this line, which is where I saw that uh, this locomotive was gonna be there. So here they are um, coming into the far north side of Madison by the Dane County Airport. This section of track was actually realigned uh, in about a decade and a half ago now. They moved it um, a few hundred feet to the west of the original right of way to allow for expansion of the airport. And now it's on this uh, low bridge over the Cherokee Marsh and has a sweeping curve coming toward Highway CV. It uh, makes for a nice shot. So um, heads up to Stephen Chen if you're uh, ever so inclined to go that way. <laughs> Um, and then this is them uh, coming further into Madison on Packers Avenue. The track kind of comes up a hill there. This is a location that I hadn't really tried before, even though I've been rail fanning around Madison for over a decade now. Um, this is in late February. This is the same line, uh, M&P subdivision. The... Um, Alliant Energy Columbia Power Plant, just south of Portage there, gets service. Um, this is CP train 813. Um, this is one of the odd cases where the eastbound loaded coal trains has the odd numbered symbol as they come down the Tomas sub into Portage and then use about the first four miles of the M&P sub to get to the power plant. So they're crossing an iced over Duck Creek. Um, a few days later, or no, I think this was actually the same day. Uh, this is uh, 199, um, running kind of late, coming into Portage in the evening. And the reason I was interested in this train this particular day was because I got my first opportunity to catch not only um, my first CP SD70 ACU, of course, this was the big excitement for all of us uh, Wisconsin Rail fans this year, was the SD70. ACU rebuild program of their um, former SD9043 Max. Um, they've released the uh, military paint series. This is the Navy tribute unit number 7022. And of course also the Heritage series, the um, five in the script paint and the five in the block lettering paint. Um, and this was my first chance to catch one of those a few days later uh, in February. <clears throat> this is uh, train 288 and this was, a, this was on a Sunday and it was another case of um, just barely get out of work in time to catch them because I was working Sundays for uh, most of this year. So yeah, uh, this is 7010 leading 288 at Richwood, Wisconsin, which is a tiny little town just uh, near Watertown. Um, still in late February, um, another interesting thing I had the opportunity to catch on the CP. Um, NS number 1800 is uh, an SD70 ACC, which uh, was rebuilt from a standard cab SD70 and converted from DC to AC traction. They did this rebuild uh, in 2018. And... Uh, of course, they managed to get it quite dirty in just two years, but uh, 
They're meeting uh, 288 at Dodge West here. Uh, Dodge West is where there's about a 20 mile section of double track uh, west of Watertown. And this is where it comes to an end for, uh, for westbounds. And uh, they actually never stopped moving for this meet. Uh, 288 this day was relatively short. It wasn't one of those uh, 10,000 foot land barges that we've gotten used to seeing in recent months. So they slowed down to about walking speed um, and never had to come to a full stop by the time uh, the tail cleared and they got the clear to continue west. Um, here they are at, um, I've heard old timers refer to this place as uh, Poppenfuss, um, apparently uh, for a Milwaukee Road era local. Um, they, this is a common uh, crew change and refueling point for the CP. Um, so that's uh, NS 1800 with the, um, this was oil train, westbound uh, empty oil train number 581. They were re yeah, refueling the engine there. They were actually overtaken by three trains in that uh, span. Uh, the local coming back from Madison, um, 281, and then Amtrak 7 here before they were uh, able to get, they also changed crews there and then got going again. Uh, this is a few days later. Um, this is another empty oil train, 587, at the uh, same location. They had a CSX SD40-2 in the lead there. Uh, likewise, they had just refueled the power here and then were pulling ahead into the yard. Uh, this is March 6th. Uh, this would end up being the last day that I actually got out before um, the pandemic really started. Um, I caught three Wisconsin and Southern trains around Milton and Janesville. This is T6, uh, the train from Madison. They had actually come into Milton with two SD40-2s, uh, set out one, and then picked up this uh, GP38-2 before heading into Janesville. Then this is uh, T4, which is the train that comes from Horicon. They had uh, picked up, this is the SD40-2 set out by T6 earlier, as well as a cut of cars. Um, there's a siding north of Janesville or timetable west that was built in 2015. And they'll often um, leave blocks of cars there, um, especially the train from Madison, will leave uh, the Chicago bound cars there and then they'll get picked up by T4 from Horicon, which then becomes the uh, Chicago train, and they can save a lot of time uh, without going having to take trains into the yard to set out cars that way. So here they're coming across the uh, Rock River Bridge, and then uh, here they're out on the uh, the Fox Lake sub uh, going towards Chicago, and then. Uh, this is their counterpart train, T3, which goes to uh, from Janesville to Horicon, heading out of town. Okay, fast forward uh, almost three months now, um, following the uh, first uh, wave of lockdowns and just a lot of uncertainty about uh, well, everything, <laughs> as everyone knows how uh, kind of everything kind of exploded in the spring. Um, this is um, at um, Waterloo, there's a, there's a, what we call the pit. Uh, it's a transloading site where ballast from the Michaels materials quarry nearby is trucked in and then loaded uh, onto, uh, onto trains, both uh, CP and Wisconsin and Southern uh, have ballast trains loaded there. So CP had brought a Herzog set in with um, this three unit EMD set. And here they are switching the pit with uh, the power sandwich between cuts. And then uh, here they are. I had hoped to catch them leaving and uh, taking the loads out, um, but they ended up uh, taking too long and I had to leave that day. Did I lose a slide? 
And I guess I lost the slide. There was supposed to be another picture in here. But uh, anyway, this is a few days later. Um, I did catch another ballast train with a pair of SD40-2s that had been loaded at the pit. And then um, they got on to the Watertown submain at Watertown. And here they are heading west at Richwood. This is the CP weed sprayer train coming into Portage. This was in mid-June. Um, also in mid-June, this is my second uh, heritage unit uh, leading. This is 7013 leading 288 as they're leaving Portage. Um, a few days later, another 288, another uh, SD70 ACU. Uh, this wasn't actually my first um, my first uh, red leader, but it was uh, the first one I decided to share. Uh, the second, the second uh, order, um, 7025 on up, is still very clean and shiny. Sorry, I had to pause for a minute here. Yeah, a couple of my slides have disappeared on me. There are supposed to be a few more pictures in here that uh, you haven't seen. Anyhow, this is um, a 281 coming into Portage. Uh, they're actually meeting a 288 here on the siding. Uh, but this was a uh, six unit consist with another clean uh, red ACU leader. And there's second, this is the um, NATO Temperate Army Tribute Unit, uh, number 7020. Uh, this was another 281, but uh, just an interesting uh, tagging job on this car. Here's a uh, Another ballast train, this one they're heading to the pit on the branch line. And coming across the Crawfish River, uh, this is at Hubbleton, a uh, little town. Um, they're either in far eastern Dane County or far western Jefferson County. But, uh, this is a popular spot for, uh, for locals. And then um, this is the payoff shot that I stayed around the rest of that day for is um, the uh, loaded train heading west on the main. Uh, here's another 281 um, with one of the uh, heritage painted ACUs leading. This one has the block lettering. Uh, paint job, uh, I believe 7015 to 7019 have that scheme, while 7010 through 7014 have the script lettering. And then here it is, um, west of Portage, with the um, the older style CP Beaver logo on the on the short hood. Um, here's another. One of the heritage units leading, this is uh, 7014 on the bridge over the Wisconsin River at the Wisconsin Dells. And here's that same train coming into Portage, coming under the Wisconsin Highway 16 bridge. Um, over this past uh, summer, there are a lot of, or, well, not a, a lot of, but several locations uh, that I realized or kind of never really thought of to use as photo spots before, even though I've been rail fanning this line for over a decade. Um, there are some spots around Portage and Columbus and the Dells that um, I just never really tried before. Okay. This is um, in September. We're in Loves Park, Illinois, uh, which is a northern suburb of Rockford. This is on the <clears throat> western segment of what's left of the KD line or uh, Kenosha district, a line which once ran from Rockford to Kenosha, uh, former Chicago and Northwestern, 
most of it was abandoned back in the 30s. But um, there's a segment here, um, a segment um, on the eastern end that uh, connects the um, the UP's Kenosha and Milwaukee subdivisions. I believe it's called the Farm Sub. It runs through downtown Kenosha. And uh, there's also a section in between near Harvard that serves a grain elevator. Anyway, um, this local, this was a day I'd headed down to Rockford um, just kind of to see what I could see. And uh, this train was one of the things I had hoped to see um, because after they worked there, um, there's a chemical plant at the end of the line um, where they swapped out a tank car. This covered hopper was just a buffer or I don't know why it was really on the train. They didn't switch it out. Um, there's also a scrap yard at the end of that spur, but they didn't uh, do anything with it that day. But the main reason I wanted to get this train was because there is a section of this line that uh, runs down the middle of Madison Street in Rockford. Um, one of the few active sections of street running left that you'll find in this region. Um, and the nice thing about it too is it's long enough that um, with the train going 10 miles an hour and you going 30 miles an hour, it's easy to get two runbys on that section. So here they are. Um, this uh, local is based out of Belvedere, and um, there's a couple other customers in Rockford that uh, they switch that aren't on this section. Um, uh, another another uh, trip to Rockford to do some more exploring is definitely on my list because there's um, Rockford is kind of one of those places where it's not really on a main line for any railroad, but there's a lot of branch line action. There's UP, CP, CN, and uh, the Illinois Railway all have local jobs there. So it's one of those places where if you go, you may not see anything, but if you do see something, chances are it'll be interesting. So this is in uh, early October when this uh, car, uh, the Dagny Taggart, uh, named after a character from Atlas Shrugged was uh, uh, at the end of Amtrak number seven going west. Um, this is a 1949 Bud car uh, that was built for the New York Central. Saw service on the, I believe it was the Southwest Limited. And um, well, the reason myself and a lot of other people went out to catch this was because the rumor is that it will be its last run outside of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, which is where it's based. Uh, next day in October, this is a CP train 281 coming into Portage. Um, about two or three years ago, CP started doing these uh, SD60-3 rebuilds at uh, NRE, National Railway Equipment. They did 10 of these in the 6300 series. Um, and this was after, back in 2011, 2012 or so, uh, they had most of their remaining former Sioux Line SD60s rebuilt at CAD Railway Industries in Montreal. Uh, this, that's when they were numbered into the CP 6200s and they got the uh, all over red paint with no logo, like you see on the uh, second unit here. Um, some of them, I believe, actually got a second rebuild less than 10 years later to get into this series. But this one um, escaped the first series of rebuilds. So this was uh, Sioux 6024 up until it became CP 6306. Um, and then this was a, this was a, this train was just a, you know, fun catch all around with the uh, GP 38-2 second out as well. Uh, this is the same day, um, another one of those um, meets where we've got um, 288 on the left here coming in at, uh, this is the west end of Portage again, and uh, empty oil train 587, two BNSF units and a UP unit 
meeting on the CP. Um, and now this is, we're getting into uh, pretty recent times here. Um, this is um, CP train 288. We had the uh, Central Maine and Quebec uh, AC 4400 CW trailing. Uh, this was the, I believe the first time it's been circulating back and forth on the uh, Bensonville, the Twin Cities rotation for uh, ever since this day, basically. So it's still out there if you want to catch it. Um, the I'm told that it won't lead because it lacks PTC capability. So and so far that's been true. Um, this is that same day as that train was leaving Portage. The local from Madison came in off the branch line. This is typical power for them in in 2022 GP20C ECOs. Then uh, moving east, uh, this is Salisbury Road, and uh, Jerry Krug was there. Um, if he's in the house, I know I saw him earlier. And uh, chase them further east. Uh, this is east of Rio. And uh, that same day, we have 281. They've just gotten into Portage and uh, changed crews at the depot with the Kansas City Southern leader. Um, this was a week ago last Friday now. Um, I took a day trip to the Mississippi River mainly to catch action on the BNSF, which runs uh, through Wisconsin along the east side of the river. But uh, I happened to hear a train calling for a track warrant on the CP. Uh, so headed across the river to Marquette, Iowa, and found this uh, coal train with uh, Union Pacific Power at the yard office. Um, this is on the CP Marquette sub, or uh, former Iowa, Chicago, and Eastern. Uh, just made for a nice scene there with the fall colors on the river bluffs. And uh, coming back across the river, caught some action on the BNSF as per my plan. And here's an eastbound uh, intermodal. There's a lot of intermodal traffic on this line. Uh, here's a westbound intermodal. Um, this is the former uh, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy line that runs between Chicago and the Twin Cities. And um, unlike the former CNNW and Milwaukee Road lines, which kind of run north, they run north out of Chicago and then angle northwest across Wisconsin, this one runs east to west across northern Illinois and then mostly north up the river. Uh, in Wisconsin to reach the Twin Cities. So your westbounds are geographically northbound. And then uh, we caught a couple eastbounds. Here at the end of the day. Um, one interesting thing about the BNSF, um, at least um, for someone like me who doesn't come here often is they run relatively few trains with uh, distributed power. Um, at least most of the ones I saw in this day had all the power up front. There were, there were a couple exceptions, but CP and CN seem to be running almost everything as 10,000 foot plus monsters with power cut in the middle or at the, or at the end. Um, and then here's another example. This was the last train I got a photo of on this day. This was uh, Westbound Manifest, uh, four locomotives all up front. And um, that's all there is. So, uh, questions? Andy Worley, uh, give it up for Andy, everybody. Uh, wonderful pictures. You've been keeping busy here the last few months in the pandemic. 
Anybody have any questions or uh, comments or? I'll ask a question. But I, um, how long is that street? What what town was that where you had street running on? Was it UP or BN? I'm not sure. Yeah, that was in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, that was uh, Union Pacific. How long is that street running? I mean, um, the, the longer length of the street. I mean, kind of. It's about. Let me see if I can get screen sharing off. There we go. Yeah. Or it looks like some. Mike, did you take me out of it? I did. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's about four or five blocks. Like I said, it's long enough that um, if you start at the north end, you can beat the train to the south end okay. and, get set, and get set up for another run by. Well, thank you. Thank you, Harry. Good to see you here tonight, by the way. Uh, anything else for, for Andy? All right, well, we have two more presentations for tonight. Um, Thank you all for, uh, for, for joining us tonight and thank you to our presenters for presenting.